Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. Hi. How are you? I'm from yeah, Gaza. Subhanallah. Are you are you are you Palestinian? Are you from Are you from Gaza? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I've been yeah. living here for my whole life. Yeah. You speak you speak good English. Well, thank you. I'm an English literature and language student, okay. so Okay. Okay, that's why then. Okay, I'm going to try and add the charity if Salam charity can comment and then I can add them. I'm not, I'm very I'm not good at this this stuff honestly. I was trying to find you to add you for a long time but I couldn't see it. Salam charity if you're on here can you comment so I can I can add you guys. Um it's 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 an honor to speak to you today Nadia. Thank you so much for making the time to to speak uh, thank to you us. So much for having me. My pleasure. No, no, it's it's a ple it's a pleasure honestly. Um I'm sure there's a, there's a lot of people on here that that are really eagerly um awaiting to hear what you have to say because you know for us like people that are living like I don't know in London where I live and 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 in many places around the world it's kind of just like a like a dream we can only kind of imagine it we when we're, we're never going to be able to see it or feel the kind of life that 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 you're living right now and what and what it would be like so this live i guess is just to just to kind of educate people and a lot of people don't actually don't actually know fully what's happening right now it sounds crazy it must sound even more crazy to you because you're living it but there are some really ignorant uneducated people that don't actually know what's happening so so that's the that's the the, the reason why we're doing this live inshallah so um yeah 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 i, I understand uh well that's that's a good reason to to do a live in fact yeah what's been going on here is crazy but the fact that you are i think you said you were in london and you know what's happening is still like a progress because there was a time where what's happening now was happening but no one heard about it but like now we have social media and we finally yeah. feel like we're, we're we're being heard not like not like in a way that is so sufficient to make change but yeah. at least now we are being heard and that's very new to us it's, because what's been happening now has been happening for for so long and i mean you said like to educate people I, i don't i wouldn't really like classify them as ignorant i really understand that a lot of yeah. content that those people have been like getting through their own media has been really misleading so they kind of need a better content to to kind of educate themselves so i wouldn't really like go for the term ignorant i mean but i okay, understand yeah. i understand. i hear you for, you know for me it's just it's frustrating honestly because like like this has been happening for so many years and and like so many years and every time every time it it takes something really really like extraordinary extraordinary for israel to do for people to for to people to wake up and care about it and like i don't understand how how it's been happening for so many years and sometimes i speak to people and they and they just don't know about it but um what was i going to say so in gaza right now do you like do, does it feel like on the ground people people are helping like do you, do you feel like people are making a difference on the ground like what are some of the things that charities are doing to help people i mean you mean people on the ground as it like around the world or like in, in gaza no, itself no i mean in in gaza sorry yeah what people here are doing well i mean people here are barely trying to help themselves i mean <laughs> they're trying to survive so they're the, the the fact that they not helping or helping each other no if everyone is staying at their house trying to stay alive for as long as possible no i mean, I mean the i mean the i mean the charities you know the charities that that are oh, the helping charities. out over there yeah yeah, yeah interesting well yet yeah, some 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 like like um charities started like doing fundraising campaigns and stuff but you know i think those stuff uh happen uh, more and more frequently after the aggression ends because it's easier to access people now it's it's not really easy to access gazans and like actually give them the charity and actually give them the money and i've been saying this before uh, online that you know even if you donate now to gaza like try to make sure that the place you donate to is like an actual charity it's not someone yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to lie to you. and just know that your money will not really act like be given to gazans right away gazans will receive it after the aggression ends where where like on ground charities start like working again because now like all places are almost closed yeah, so the, yeah. the people will receive the money after the aggression ends that's that's the people see the money they receive the money after yeah so, most probably so you know like 
uh, we, we've seen like videos of like houses and stuff getting bombed like where are those people living at the moment the people who have lost their houses their homes like where what are those people doing to to where, where, where are they living now well uh, a lot of people who have lost their houses and uh, i mean by a lot i mean um 70 70,000 people which is quite a lot have, have been homeless now people have, they, lost, have lost their homes yeah <laughs> that's the the most recent number i I've, I've read today uh and they live most of them live in honorwa schools Sco well honorwa schools are schools that are uh, are kind of um related or funded by the United Nations. But you know, there's still schools. The schools are not really made to be shelters or they're not made to be to be refugee camps. They're schools, so they're like so insufficient and people they are complaining about the services, about like the, the insufficient bathrooms, ins like the lack of electricity, the lack of cleanness and neatness. So it's, it's really terrible there. Yeah. So the people, people are living in the schools that have lost their homes and the schools are being used yeah, as shelters. They're are the, are, yeah, the children, are, are the children still going to school like from day to day or is everyone just more is everyone kind of trying to stay safe inside their houses right now the connection has gone a little bit where is salam charity are you guys in here I think I think we've lost her. Guys, is is can you guys still hear me? Is the connection still good? Oh, we've lost her. We've lost her. Okay, at Salam Charity. Okay, here we go. Go live, Salam Charity. Where is Nada gone? She's gone. Salam alaikum, my brother. My brother, how is it going, bro? Alhamdulillah, bro. How are you? Listen, we were just on. We were on the thing with her. She's. I don't know Where's she gone? Uh, she just turned off. Yeah, Nadia, can you comment again so we can try and add you back again? Yeah, um, yeah inshallah. Yeah, she was, she was just talking. Maybe her phone died or something. I don't know. But she was just talking about the um, the fact that the people who have lost their shit, 70,000 people have lost their homes. Wow. Which I, was com I was completely unaware of, bro. I didn't, I didn't think it was that many. I thought it was like a handful of people that were losing their homes. Like, you know, for me, what I'm seeing is I'm seeing this is this is how powerful the media is, bro. Like. The, the, the narrative that I'm getting is Israel are mainly bombing like government buildings and stuff and they're mainly they're mainly bombing like buildings that have nothing to do with like families and stuff and then they're catching the odd family home and, and, and wrecking them. but but 70,000 people have lost their homes that's quite ongoing that means that they're just continuously bombing houses all yeah over. I think it's, bro I think it's just ongoing man like if you if you bomb a hospital or whatever and it's caused the houses and everything a house is probably literally next door to a hospital, whereas here you've got a hospital and you've got a car park. And then if something happens at the hospital, it's just a surroundings. But there, because I think it's building and then hospital and then maybe government building is so tight and connected that these people are being affected. But it's just, you just wonder what's happening with these families. That where, where are they living? Like overnight, where are they staying? Bro, I don't. She said they're staying in schools. She said they've 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 freed up the schools and and uh, the families that have lost their houses are staying in schools. She said the 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 cleanliness and the 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 way the schools are is just disgusting. She said it's not it's not no place where people are supposed to be able to live, but it's just the only buildings that can fit that many people in right now are schools, and and the Israel Israel are then bombing the schools, like they're they're bombing the schools as well. Like bro, I don't even. I just, I just don't understand, man. I, I heard there was some talk of a peace treaty, but, but I don't, I don't know if that's, if that's a fact or not. Did you hear? Did you hear about the peace treaty? Yeah, it keeps, it keeps popping up, bro, in the conversation. But there's just, you, you want to see some movement, don't you? And there's nothing, nothing really happening. You hear about Egypt, and you hear about a couple of other countries wanting to help, like Turkey and yeah. Egypt. But then you, the movement, bro, because every, every back hour, back. She back, every hour that's delayed, bro. It's just like. How do I? Um, add, the new ad, it's, it's not letting me add her. Wait one second. Uh, Nadia. Nadia, ask him. Nadia, see him. How do you add someone else? So if you. Uh, one second. Uh, you, you should be able to add, bro, because you're like admin, I think. When I click on her name, it just says. um. It just says pin comment, report comment, or hide uh, Nadia uh, live. Nadia, if she sends a request. Nadia, can you try and send a request? 
to be honest, I've never been on live with more than one person at a time, so I don't, I've never done it before. Yeah, I think it's all chain. I think there's about four, four people that can go live now. So now, I was gonna go live from my own, bro, but uh, no one from here was yeah. from here was from Salam Charity. So I was very confused. I was trying to find Salam Charity for ages. Um, Nadia, if you can send a request, when I click on her name, it don't let me add her, bro. What I'll do is, Harry, I'll go off, I'll jump on my own, and then you add her. It might, it might let you do it if, if I go off or something. No, but we should be able to all do it at the same time. Yeah, it should, it should let you. Uh... Why don't, listen, why don't you start the live from the charity, add her on, and then add me on as well? Ah, right, say, bro. Okay, uh, Farah, Farah will do it. Farah, uh, Farah Ferrero, if you uh, go on Salam account now, and then yeah. add Harris, and then add Nadia, and then I'll jump on mine, inshallah. Yeah, because this is, all, this is all too technical for me. I'm not, I'm not good with this. Stuff. <laughs> all right, well, we'll do that. All right, day. guys, we're gonna, guys, hold up. We're going to jump on the live again. In about all right, five, awesome. about, yeah, all right, inshallah. Is it Nadia Asiam? Yes. Yes, yes. Got it, got it. Inshallah. Um, I don't think Harris is working because he needs to update his Instagram. Assalamu alaikum, Nadia. Hello, hi. Sorry, the internet, like the electricity went off, so that's why I kind of lost the connection. It's okay, it's okay. So I'm, I'm so sorry. My name is Farah. I am. Um, um, I work for Salam Charity. This is my colleague uh, Uzair. Assalamu alaikum. Nice to meet you. Alaikum salam. Nice meeting you guys. Thank you for Likewise. Me. So what is the current situation in Gaza right now? Well, generally, the aggression has been going on for around 12 days now. The bombardment is very intensive. It's, it doesn't stop. I mean, if it's like less severe in one area and it's more severe in another area. But generally, it's, it's, it goes on all the time. And yeah, I mean, there are 230 people who have been killed. Uh, 65 of them were children, 17 were elderly, 40 were women. Uh, a lot of people lost their home, their houses. I was just saying that like around 70,000 people are now homeless. And yeah, uh, and like count like a, a, a lot of other like places have been targeted that like not home homes but like centers and infrastructure. So that situation in general is very intense and hard. You know, I'm so sorry that you you are you guys are suffering right now and you guys are going through this. Um, I want you to know that everybody in the world is, you know, protesting, sending so much love and duas to you guys. Honestly, like since it's happened, everybody is literally being your guys' voice and going hitting the streets and doing everything that they can on we're your trying, behalf. Yeah, we're trying everything. Yeah, we're we trying. see this and it really means a lot to us. I mean that that re that really is a beginning to a change. We really appreciate you, can you can you can you Nadia sorry can you tell the people you know because we have we've been having protests here for the last like week or so um people are people are trying to to to, to gather the numbers and and can you tell the people what it's like for people in Gaza and people in Palestine when they see when they see people at protests like supporting them and stuff yeah because a lot of people they they say here oh we we there's no point there's no point us going to protest what good does it do if you protest and uh what what how are we helping them can you tell them what it's like for, for when people actually see um sorry when people actually see the the ummah supporting them yeah well I, as i was just telling you that you know having this much support is kind of new because what's new of gaza has been going on for so long now i mean this is the fourth question we have had uh but like what's the first time is that we've been seeing a lot of people interacting with what's and like people protesting and that at, well it, in the least provides us with like kind of um kind of emotional support let's say but in fact yeah. there, there is a point there is a point that those people can kind of pressure their governments to make a change because you know the uk government or is kind of always biased towards israel but when they see that their own people are against what the government stands for then the government would kind of be forced to make a change so the the harder they push the more the more possible that that a change will happen Inshallah, Inshallah. Um, I mean, I am here in Leicester right now. I'm going to show you where I am. Oh, Inshallah, there's a protest. 
So you know exactly what Harris is saying. We want to know that you guys are seeing everything. We are supporting you, even though we are thousands of miles away. Our hearts are there in Al Quds with you. Our hearts are in Gaza with you. So, inshallah, none of this will be in vain, and this will all be worth something. So, Salam Charity are currently giving emergency medical aid in Gaza and East Jerusalem. They are also providing food because we know that inflation is so high. Things are so expensive. It's so important to. It's it's like we are telling the world that we are providing them with basic necessities. You guys with basic necessities that every human should have access to, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Thank you so much. No, honestly, and if what is it that you guys need? What is it that you guys need from us? What's the best thing that we can do for you? Yeah, I mean, all help is really appreciated, but I mean, the the, the raising awareness is the thing that would like in the long run cause a difference between because now like now we are like we urgently need uh, help that's connected to the health tech to sector and stuff that are related to, to, to war to what's going on now but when this is over the the Palestinian cause is not over because and it will still go on so the more aware people are of what's happening the 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 better the change will be because you know in the long run we might stop needing food like urgently needing food or needing like medical supplies but we would still need to be our cause will still need to be like uh there and talked about nadia can i ask a question you know when we when we see like the videos sometimes of the of the bombs dropping sometimes we see people like in gaza like they're they're, they're it's like they're they're ready like they know the bomb's about to drop like is there like a process that people have like become accustomed to like the people who are the citizens who are living there that they know when there's rockets dropping from the sky they know to run they know to start running well yes uh well the, the kind of bombings vary so but sometimes before they bomb a place they they bomb it once with like a, a warning bombing that warning doesn't bomb. cause damage and that would kind of uh, alert people to just like go out and people would go out and people would call their neighbors and their neighbors also would evacuate sometimes they might just call a person and tell them like okay you go and tell those people to evacuate or this house to evacuate and they do other times they don't do that they just bomb the house without like without a, a prior warning so that's that explains why a so, lot of families have died in, like, in so the, the war so the warning the warning bombings are basically them being them being nice in the in their eyes and then but but a lot of the time you're saying they don't even they don't even drop the warning bomb they just they'll just drop a normal bomb yeah exactly that's that's the ridiculous part that they, they say they, or they justify what they're doing is through saying that we warn people we warn people that we're going to bomb them oh how generous of you you're warning us that we're going to kill or we we'll lose our home <laughs> which is really ridiculous but yeah they do that Sometimes. I've I've also heard that they give a call ahead saying in half an hour we are scheduling an airstrike or something. Is this true? Yes, it is true. Some people do receive a phone call. And sometimes it's a phone call like which causes panic, but like in most cases like yeah, they do receive a phone call. And that is especially in houses that are uh like um, in, in, in a very crowded neighborhood in which people would need to actually go out and actually tell their own neighbors and the whole like the whole street would evacuate so because the bombing will not only affect the house that is being bombed but also the surrounding houses so like the whole like the whole street evacuates so the the area that the area that you're living in right now in gaza is it is it like is it more is it more of a safe area or is it just is it just like a free for all thing right now like you don't know where the bombs are going to drop they could drop anywhere or are you or are you quite safe where you are Honestly, no place here is safe. Uh, yeah. I've been writing about this that uh, we every day we feel like it's our last day. That today is great. we're going to die. And actually, there have has been many bombings in my own street. Uh, like uh, my brother's kindergarten was bombed, and the street in itself, the street like um, in itself was bombed. And like there was a house uh, that was also at the end of my street uh, that was bombed, in which like a whole family lived, like a doctor and his wife, who is also a doctor, and their kids were killed uh so no place is safe some people thought including myself that okay i feel safe or maybe my house is safe but during this aggression we literally feel like no place is safe and any one of us could be targeted at any moment subhanallah it's very um sad assalamu alaikum uh, sister 
uh, Nadia. My name is Zaire. So I, I work with Salam Charity, Alhamdulillah. Uh, and, you know, I'm pleased to say Salam Charity, um, they've got partners on the ground and they're actually in the, in the war zone, you know, you call it ground zero. Uh, and they're sending uh, medical supplies with people that are donating. Harris is part of the team, Alhamdulillah. He's donating as well. He's got the link in his bio. Salam Charity have also got it in their bio. And we're, we're kind of fundraising for medical equipment to help burns, um, you know, limb replacements and this kind of thing. Can you just tell us how important it is that you get the medical supplies for burns and medication, stretchers? I mean, last time I spoke to the sister, she was saying oxygen is a big factor. Can you just explain um, uh, some on that situation as well, please? Yeah, well, um, Gaza has already, like, even before this aggression, we've been under uh, the Israeli blockade for... Um, for over 15 years now, and this blockade has had its its effects on all aspects of our lives, including the health sector, the health sector, even before Corona, even before this aggression was already suffering from shortage of a lot of equip, equipment. Uh, it's like health cent centers and hospitals are underfunded, doctors are underpaid, uh, and like places are overcrowded. And like the, there are equipments that are even banned to be entered that are needed, including I think like, what you've mentioned i'm not really sure of this exact thing i'm aware that there are certain equipments that are even banned to enter god that are needed and sometimes when people kind of try to travel urgently to, to get medication abroad uh the requests for that also get rejected so that's that was the situation before corona and then corona happened and uh, I, for for a year and a half now like the whole world have been has been going through this crisis and gaza as well which which kind of intensified the already hard situation and like there are no places not enough equipment etc etc and then now the aggression so that made it even explode even more which is like really ridiculous my, my own father is a doctor and he's, uh, he's been told that there are no places in hospitals like some people get sent home before like the, the, who still need to be at the hospital but they get sent home because like people are like need more urgent care and this day so so the situation in hospitals is a mess it's complicated and yeah really do need uh, need this sort of support the biggest the biggest thing I want to say is uh, I just want the people of Gaza yourself and everyone else and the people of Palestine to remember we are feeling their pain Wallahi, I see Harris Harris on his Instagram story and his post the amount of pain I see in his post and in in Farah sister and everyone else Wallahi, the honestly uh, if uh, uh, Harris would probably agree the the pain that we have in our hearts is like Oh Allah, take me there. And even if I can go into battle, if I can do something, Allah. you know, um, be it, be it, take down one soldier, be it, help, uh, help carry a brother or a sister on a stretcher. And trust me, I see the pain in Harris's eyes most of the time. Um, on, on my stories, I always see Harris is, is in a. There's a lot of pain going through everyone. Um, and I, I that's just Harris I'm talking about. There's thousands and millions of people that are supporting the people of Palestine, and it just feels like our hands are tied because we're so far away and it just feels like we can't do anything but like Harry said what we can do is protest we can make dua and uh, you know uh, when the time is right and Allah's power is shown inshallah he will he will show everyone and um, he will help the people of Palestine inshallah never never be forgotten I mean the Sahaba were there um, and all the Islamic history in, in, in Palestine Masjid Al-Aqsa and everything else you know uh, Allah will not allow it to go down uh, without a fight I 100% agree it was there I have I'm so grateful um, that you got, you've come on, Nadia. Honestly, thank you so much um, for telling the world the truth. And, uh, you know, we are always here to support you in every way that we can. We are also sending out, like I said earlier, emergency medical aid. We are also, so if you feel like your hands are tied, you can't do anything, you can do something. You can make dua. Yes, we can fundraise. We can send out money because with Salam Charity, we know that 100% of your funds are going to the cause. We are working with people on the ground. We are working with hospitals. We are working with reputable um, caregivers. So it's very, very important that you know that Salam Charity is always here to help provide every help um, and need that we are trying to this, give as much as possible. This is literally, this is literally the truth. This is literally the truth. The problem is, yeah, is that in the countries that we live in, the news, the news won't show this. They won't, they won't speak to a citizen in Gaza and allow them to explain the kind of experiences that they're going through and stuff. Yeah. So it's so important. Nadia, and it's so we're so thankful that you that you're coming on and you're and you're and you're telling us because like otherwise we don't see the truth. We we just we just hear about it. We see videos and and we're we're never gonna actually 
get to experience what what you're feeling and w- wallahi when I, when Uzair was saying it's true like we want to it sounds crazy but we want to be there with you like like we can't we can't do much from here and i feel sometimes i feel so useless just posting up on my freaking phone just 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 nonsense and and try and trying to help as much as i can but but honestly oh what you're going through because otherwise we have no other way we have no other way and it's so important that people like you are doing this inshallah and i ask allah to end your suffering I've I've heard mm-hmm. we we've been hearing that like we've been hearing that there's a peace treaty peace treaty talk. Have you heard anything about that? Well, they're talking about a ceasefire, something like that, but nothing right. is certain. Yeah. But yeah, it's there, not are, certain. there are yeah, there are talks about a ceasefire, but you know, a ceasefire means like ending the aggression, but not the whole situation. So it's what it's like putting the situation into a pause rather than solving it. So really, like when the fire, like when this aggression stops, the blockade will still be there, and the situation will yeah. not be a hundred percent better. It would be just like slightly better. We will just feel slightly safer, but that's it. But I just want to on what you guys said about like the protests and about like posting. Yeah, they, uh, we really see that and we appreciate that. Um, yeah. I mean, as as I, I've, I've said like uh, a while ago that. Uh, before we di- we didn't like really see that much support and we really felt left out and felt alone but this time we feel okay through social media that okay yeah. media doesn't tell the truth but social media and people try to discover the truth so it, it so now it's not press talking to people it's people talking to people so that makes 100% the message, that exactly. makes the message exactly. of, uh, uh, like on a, on a spread on a wider range and that really comes as a pat on the shoulder for us and we really see this and feel that it, this is like a, a seed that is that might inspire change inshallah inshallah my friend in gaza has been telling me every day um he's 25 years old and he's seen five wars and this is the worst war right now worst war they have been through <laughs> This one is the, is like the most deadly. We literally feel like at any moment we might die. They've been targeting civilians like crazy. And I, like one of my classmates, well, she herself thankfully survived, but 15 members or her of her family died, or like have been killed to be like more precise. They bombed their house during the night, uh, and like 15 people. Her her mom, like four of her siblings like on, like she's the one the only one that survived here she and her father but like her even like her grandfather who is like 90 years old they killed him so and like they were sleeping at the safety of their house their house they never expected this and i feel like okay what makes me different we were classmates we go to school together like exactly. my, it could have been my own family it could have been anyone else's family and so yeah we we, we we feel like this this aggression is like that that did list so far yeah we need to we, we need, need to, to keep, we need to keep protesting and we need to keep raising money that's that's to all the people who are watching this now that you've heard it from someone who's living in gaza firsthand make sure you're at the protest on saturday make sure you're at all of the protests that you can be at because it means a lot to these people they're telling us with their own mouths it means it means a lot that we're there and it means a lot that we can try and raise money and that's all we can really do but but why why would we do nothing instead of doing something you know so please guys whoever's watching this just just do something like these people are appreciating the very little that we can do so much so we have to keep doing it inshallah 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 and all of these places uh, that are supporting um, they are right on our doorstep we are right here in Leicester and inshallah we will incite change it happened positively we did it with South Africa we did it with Bosnia it is possible and social media is the strongest it's ever been right now so it's so important that um, Nadia you were telling us your account people are again you said speaking to people it's, we are not relying on the, the mainstream media for everything and we are speaking to you first and you are there right now um, you know I'm constantly in talks with people in Gaza as we speak and every single day they're showing me videos we've been called we've been uh, they've sent us a warning we have to evacuate our family uh, somewhere else you know all of this if this was happening to us right now we would be broken you are so strong you are honestly so inspirational to us. Um, mashallah, we admire you so much. And we want to give you strength. We want to show that everyone in the world here is praying for you and raising for you guys. And we are sending as much aid to you guys as possible. So guys, remember the link is pinned below. Um, please go on Harris's link and we will, inshallah, send that aid um, directly to Gaza and East Jerusalem where they need it right now. Inshallah. 
one final thing from me, sister, is um, the people of Palestine. I was at the masjid and so they were saying the people of Pal Palestine, they have a lot of Iman. Mashallah, the, the people have a lot of Iman. They have a lot of Yaqeen. And they have a lot of Iman in their deen and in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what's going to help, inshallah. You see some of these pictures and videos of these elderly women and these little, little children. And they're standing up to the Israeli soldiers and their guns in the face. Wallah, if we were there, we would run. You know, we would, we would run from those places. These little kids, they're soldiers. They're soldiers of Allah. And uh, the Iman that they have, and Allah will protect them, inshallah. And uh, we just want you to remember, like Hadith said, like Farah said, always in our du'as, there's a lot of pain in our hearts. Every time we see a video or a picture or a destructive building, there's a lot of pain in our hearts. But we make du'a, inshallah. And, um, you know, Allah, Allah, Allah is, the, is the one uh, who accepts. And inshallah, he will accept one day. And um, we, we pray for peace, inshallah. 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 Right, inshallah. Okay, Thank guys. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair. And inshallah, speak to you guys soon. Inshallah. Thank you so much. Stay safe, Stay safe inshallah. Stay my prayers. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Assalamu alaikum, sister.